Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a special one. It is going to be a Patreon request. Um, I have a $5 tier that if you do it, you can ask me to re react to, to any video. It doesn't have to be wrestling related. As long as it's YouTube friendly. Uh, if, if it is wrestling related, most likely I won't be able to show footage of me watching it because of um, copyrights and stuff. I'll, I plan on doing some editing, still pictures, whatnot during it, um, sometimes some video, we'll just see. So the, uh, Justin Heranis, Heranis, whatever, however you say it, um, he requested me to watch what I believe is the Valentine's Day death match, uh, Valentine's Day Deathmatch from Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. I'm not 100% sure if that's what it is because it's in Japanese. It just says, um, uh, I think Chris Brooks versus uh, that chick who, who's the one of the three people trying to be like the cutest in the world right now. It's her, Maki Ito, and Tam. Um, but she, I guess she also does like death matches, which is pretty interesting. I've heard a lot of good things about this match, and I'm looking forward to watching it. So... Let's, it, this video is an hour and 22 minutes somehow, so I'm not really sure how that worked out, but I, I hope it's not an hour and 22 minute, like, uh, match. So let's start this and see what's happening. Oh, I need sound. English commentary, huh? Okay, so a lot of this is, is not in English. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to skip forward to the actual match, because um, I don't really care what they're saying. I don't watch Tokyo Joshi, so I don't know the... So I wouldn't be able to understand what they're saying anyway. Oh uh, yeah, her. I recognize her. She's the the one. Oh, those are the. So I remember a picture of um of her after the match where she has like all those sticks like stuck in her head. I don't know if they're like actually stuck in her head or they're just stuck in her hair, but it doesn't look like her hair is the type of hair that would be um able to keep it in on top. It looks really like thin and stuff. Miyaka? Is that her name? Miyaka? Now this guy I do know a little bit about, um, Chris Brooks. I don't, like, I've never seen him wrestle and I don't know too much about him. All I know is that he, he really enjoys wrestling in the Joshi scene. And he, um, like, for example, he really likes being a Gato move. He has this rivalry going on with, uh, Mei Suruga. If that's who I'm thinking. Like, he's really tall, too. I guess his plan is to be the best Joshi wrestler in the world. Which is, um... I feel like that's a thing that can't happen. <laughs> since, you know, Joshi is, uh... Women exclusive. But... Alright, this is interesting. I don't know if this was, um... DDT or Tokyo Joshi. I think it was DDT since there's dudes. I don't think Tokyo Joshi has guys participate in any of their matches. Okay, so the English commentary is very noticeably quieter than everything else, which is going to be really annoying. Because um, the only thing more annoying than... Uh, having like a bunch of noise going on at once is hearing something that you can understand being over like powered by other stuff that you can't understand. This song sounds really familiar. I feel like I should know what this is. Is this the UK national anthem or is it? Yeah, I think it is the... So I have no idea what the hell she's singing. 
Oh! <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Now, um, people... I know there's this like huge controversy on... Um, mixed... Uh, gender matches. I can't remember what the like the official name for them is. It just mixed gender. I feel like there's another name, intergender matches or something. Anyway, um, I know that there's a huge like split among fans on them. One side doesn't like it because it just looks like a dude beating up women most of the time. Um, and then there's another reason not to like it because it's so obvious that the woman would almost never get any good offense in on the guy. That's just biological nature. I mean, the only time a woman is going to be, like, beat a guy in, like, an actual fight is if the woman has more training than him or is, like, much more, like, much more stronger than him. So the guy would have to be really weak for the woman to win. And trust me, there are many women <laughs> that would kill me in a fight, like... Like, Ronda Rousey would probably destroy me. Like, not probably. She would destroy me. I uh, I have zero training whatsoever. That, that's what I'm saying is that it's just in physical sports, women are at a disadvantage. It's biological nature. So that's why a lot of people don't like this because it's, it's unrealistic, as weird as that is to say, because women... Like, it's weird seeing her get any offense in on this guy. He would He would obviously beat her in, like every situation he has the height the range the strength everything and then there's the other side who really likes or who likes intergender matches or multiple gender met different gender matches um if they're done well and i'm on that side like i i like i like intergender matches or different gender matches whatever they're called I don't understand the rules. Did they explain the rules and I skipped them? Okay, so false count anywhere hardcore deathmatch. That doesn't explain any of this goofy shit going on right now. I don't get it. This is my... So, I'm going to pause it here. Because this is my problem with watching other promotions other than Stardom. Is that they do things like this where it's not just a straight match with straight rules. And then there's no explanation on what's going on to the foreign fans. Which is fine. You know, they don't have to cater to us. But... I also don't have to watch things that I don't understand. Like it's 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 not their fault cuz they don't have to cater to, you know, English speaking fans, but I also shouldn't be expected to have to watch something that I don't understand. You know what I mean? Like I don't understand the whole like why did she he go out and the new the other guy came in, they started sumo wrestling and then for some reason an announcement got made and now Chris is back in. Like none of that made sense. And it's not like it doesn't make sense in a good way. Like I don't, I don't enjoy things that I don't understand what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, if if they had just like a quick brief flash of like text at the bottom going like this happened because of this happened, or the English announcer saying why this is happening, anything, it would make things so much better. But as of right now. Um, I'm not enjoying the match whatsoever, uh, just because I don't know what's going on. I'm missing a lot of the nuances and or story background. And maybe I'll, I would know what was going on if I was following DDP or Tokyo Joshi. I don't know which one this is, but because they're both from the same streaming service. And I didn't, I don't know which one I grabbed this video from. So it seems to be back to like an actual regular match, which is good. All right, so they seem to be going with the the intergender match style, where like it's realistic. Like the woman's at a clear disadvantage here; she's she's not going to be able to. Oh, 
she's not going to be able to beat this guy like in a straight up fight. He he brushed off her chop, and his just like killed her. You know, like it, it makes. So far, I'm I'm enjoying that aspect of it, like the actual match. I, I think they're doing a really good job of showing the differences between them. I'm very curious to see how they plan on having her get the upper hand. I hope it's not just some stupid stuff like she just gets a move in on him. Like, th there's got to be some reason she gets an advantage over him that makes sense, in my opinion, or it's going to ruin the the flow of the match. I think this is called the Romero special. I think. I don't know how to feel about this move, and this isn't just like because of these guys, like anybody uses it. It just seems like See like this doesn't I don't understand what's going on. I'm not the type of person who finds randomness with no explanation or reason, like, entertaining, you know? Because the problem is, there was obviously a setup in the announcement before it happened. There was a setup that happened, but I didn't see it because... Or I didn't understand it, so there's no reason for me to find it funny or interesting. So now there's a whistle and they're leaving. <coughs> so they stop the match. To have them race to the ring, and the first one to hit the ref got a point, I guess? I don't understand the point in having points if you win the match by pin. It doesn't make any sense. I'm assuming this guy's a wrestler, and he's not a referee. I'm assuming he's on her side, I guess. That's why he's slow counting, Chris. So yeah, he I guess he's on his her side because he just fast counted Chris. See, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like this match would be so much better. Without all these antics and stuff. Like, these two have great chemistry. Chris and the the chick. Like, they, they seem to work really well together. And, um... And a anything that they do together... Like, it, it feels good and real. You know, realistic. But... But with all these, like, distractions and no-nonsense things going on... It just completely ruins the match, in my opinion. Because I'm missing all of the... The info and nuances and stuff. Like, I don't know who that guy was. So, I don't know if he was on her side, usually. Or he's just, like, a a weird guy. I don't... See, it could be argued that the reason why they're doing all these crazy antics is because there's no, no realistic way that she would be able to last in the ring with him for too long. But I disagree. It's a death match. Have her being you like have her using like weapons and stuff to get the advantage or the upper hand sometimes when it seems like she's gonna lose. So some dude dressed as Jushin Liger comes out, and gets in the ring, poses, and then gets attacked by some other dude, and chased off. Like, what did that add to the match? Like, I'm sure it was funny for the people there because you know. Like that, that, there's like history and stuff, but like, I don't honestly. I would love to see this match cut up to only have the match part. <laughs> well, he tried to explain it, but I could barely hear the English commentary. 
So they have to do something, and the winner gets to paint the other person's face. Oh, that was the announcer. The guy who attacked Jushin Liger. So now he's painting the announcer's face instead of hers. But, like, why? That's what I'm talking about with, like... And that was one of my reasons I didn't like the Gato Move experience. Is that... I don't know what the hell they're saying or what's going on. Why would that be fun for me? Like, I don't understand... Like, I get that other people can like it. Like, I'm not saying that other people have to hate it or anything. But there's really no reason for me to find this entertaining or interesting. Because there's no story, there's no plot, there's no anything. Because I'm completely, I'm completely missing all of it. And now the announcer got painted again. I don't, I don't get it. No wonder why this video is an hour long, because it's just full of filler. God, please let this bit be over. See, this is great. This part's great. I love when they're actually doing shit, like wrestling. Like, honestly, up until this point, it's kind of insulting to call it a deathmatch. They have done nothing that's deathmatch related at all. Unless in Japan, death matches are just gimmick matches. See, so just when it was getting interesting, they're going to do a stupid bit again, aren't they? So the people in the match are not even actually doing the the gimmick stuff now? Like it's just random people? Yeah, but why? Why is this a thing in the middle of this match? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, can we get back to the actual match now, please? It's like they're just... They're just doing small, stupid shit in the middle, like, after only a little bit of actual match. Like, over and over and over again. It's gotten to the point where, like, I'm afraid to start enjoying the match because I... I know that something stupid's gonna happen to interrupt it. I can't, I can't hear him. They made the English announcer's mic way too low. Like, I, I literally couldn't hear him over the other people talking. So I really don't, I don't know the rules. I, it doesn't make any sense. So I guess every time you reverse a pin. But what does this have to do with the match? Wait, so by reverse pin, did they just mean kick out of a pin? So I think they have three cups. And if you drink two out of three, you lose a point. But then if you drink all three, you lose or something. See, that's, that's funny and that's interesting. I wish they would stop bringing in other people. Like, just let it be her and him. <laughs> That's who's in the match. So she has to drink five. See, like, that was perfect. That was physical comedy that didn't need an understanding. Well, you needed the understanding of the rules, which I kind of have. Every pin break is a, a drink for the person who was doing the pinning. And he was holding on to her, forcing her to pin him and breaking it five times in a row so she would have to drink five.
Well, she only drank two. So they're just going to ignore the rules now, or... See, this is interesting again. It's crazy how when you actually have wrestling in your wrestling match, it becomes interesting. <laughs> oh. Nice. These guys, calm down. It's a death match. If they didn't use some kind of weapon, I'd be a little disappointed. Honestly, so far, other than all of the stupid, like, annoyance interruptions, this is literally just a regular Joshi match where you can pin someone anywhere. So, like, I don't really understand why they would call this a death match. Like, I would, I would like to be happy that they're back to wrestling again, but I know it's not going to last long. It's only going to be like 30 seconds to a minute, and then they're going to ring that bell or whatever, and then some stupid game is going to happen again. I don't... So far, the one thing that they've done that was kind of deathmatch... Neither people in the match are actually doing the deathmatch part. So it's like... Like, what's the point with all these points? If... If you win by pin count. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, fucking finally. See, it's actually fun and interesting again, but I bet they're going to screw it up like they have this entire show. All right, some actual wrestling. This is freaking awesome. Like, this is interesting. It only took them an hour to do something fun and interesting to watch. Oh, hot sauce. I'm assuming hot sauce because it's red and in a hot sauce bottle, so. Oh, I feel your pain there, Chris. Oh, see, like, this is, this is cool. See, this is, this is how you give someone who's obviously weaker in a disadvantage in a fight an advantage. The camera angle's kind of shitty here, though. Come on, cameraman. Show us what's happening. <laughs> oh! See, this is a great match starting, like, five minutes ago. This, they, like I said, they have great chemistry together and they, they can do things well. It was just everything up until that point was just stupid. And like it, I had no interest in it at whatsoever. What is she doing? <laughs> I feel like I would know what's coming up here if I knew who she was, you know, like in her moveset. I'm interested to see what's happening, though. I don't know why she brought out a ladder. 
and then went up to the top rope. Okay, so just a regular crossbody. So she plans on jumping off of the ladder onto him on the table. There's no way in hell this actually happens, right? I don't I don't believe it. Oh shit. Props to her. That I was not expecting her to actually do it. She has a very weird voice as well. But like in a good way. Like it it's very interesting to hear. I bet she could voice someone in an anime like easy. Wait, what did he just say? Uh, I don't know. It, it it sounds like someone was like, "Come on, Chris, fuck him up." But I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, come on, keep it in the ring, please. I'm, the only reason why I don't want them to go outside the ring is because when they're outside the ring, there's so many people around, and the camera work gets really bad. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that was that was a very good visual. That was a very very good visual. See, this is awesome. This this is a great match. That I would literally recommend anybody who wants to watch this to skip the first like hour. Like legit, it's so boring. But this is entertaining as hell. Oh shit, the thumbtacks are out. Now, going by wrestling rules, the person to throw the thumbtacks down is usually the person that gets them in their back. So, uh, she's about to get some thumbtacks in her back. But how? I do see that cut on his back. I bet it's from the, the boxes. No. Oh. Kind of looked like he was going to go for like a Hurricane Rana. Oh! Hmm. That's a nice little touch. I don't know if this is supposed to be her character or not, but her like reacting like that to the horror that she just did is a really nice touch. Like it, it gives her a little bit more character than I, what I thought she had. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! Oh, that dude is crazy. Whoever's in Chris's corner, he just did a 450, which is awesome, but into the tax. I can't tell if this is like just how she always acts, but it kind of seems like she's directing the match while it's happening. And not in like a good way, like it's super obvious. But if that's just how she always acts, like that's just her her way of like being normal, then it it's not bad. But he made it sound like this was her show that like she was putting this on. So if she is like directing everything, it's super obvious. Damn, that chair shot. I want Chris has to win this, right? Even with the weapon advantage, I can't see her beating him. So what are those? They're just like sticks? I don't really know like I don't know what they are. I just know that she gets a bunch of them in her head. They look really thick though. Like 
Not something that you would like stick in you and it would be okay. Oh. Oh. That was a gnarly finish. Holy cow. So you could get the pin and not win? That's really dumb. That was... That last part? You know, after the first hour was over? So like the last like 10 minutes essentially? Was really good. I really loved it. It was... It was a great match. They had really good chemistry together. They really, uh, they really, I, I mean, there were some points where, like I was saying, it was super obvious that she was, like, directing things. And um, it didn't feel like she was just kind of naturally going from one bit to the next. But that aside, everything was really great. And I have mad respect for her and Chris. Because that was... That they did some fucked up shit to each other. That is a visual and a half. Oh, she. I think she has a chip too. Oh no. She's cute. Now, is this song her theme, or is it just like a? A song. It must be some kind of like... Has some kind of meaning to it. You know? Emotional wise. Because... She seems to be kind of... Cracking up here. Yeah, so... I really like the ending part. That was really, really fun. Uh, and awesome to watch. And I like those small bits of wrestling that they actually did during all of that stupid shit. Um, but all of that stupid shit was pretty stupid and it was, it was very boring. And the only part that I think made me laugh at all or was interesting was the dart part. Um, and then the, uh, the, the drinking part when he forced her to pin him five times. Oh, uh, maybe it was like a new year's song. Does she always has a lisp, or is it just because of the, the match? <laughs> She's fucking crazy, dude. I love it. She's awesome. I love her so much. She's awesome. Like that was that was great. I don't know if she really understood any of the English that she was saying cuz I don't know like who she is. <coughs> and I don't know her English ability, but that was great. Um one thing that I would have changed for that or, like, here's some things that I would change. Um, one, I wouldn't... I would cut out, like, the first hour. Uh, if you're not going to explain things. Um, they tried with the English announcer, but... The English announcer's mic was so low that if anybody in the arena made any noise... While he was talking, it overpowered him. So, like, I, I couldn't hear half the stuff he was saying. There, there were times when I was realizing he was talking without... Like, and he was finishing his sentence. And I, I, I didn't know that he was actually talking that whole time because he was getting drowned out by everyone else. Uh, all of the stupid games, like I said, I don't understand them. They, they weren't really explained very well. The only one I could hear the explanation for was, like, the drinking one. And it was only half the explanation. Um, 
And then even the games that I did understand the rules, kind of like the boxing one, I didn't understand what happened. Like, he kept kicking, and everyone acted like it wasn't against, or it, w it wasn't allowed. But then the other dude just left by being carried in a chair, and then the other guy got a point for some reason. And then other people would come in and wrestle for the other two people. It it was uh, it was chaotic and not in a good way, in my opinion. Now, just because I didn't like the first hour of this, didn't you know? Nothing against people who liked it. If you liked it, you liked it. You know, I I just I didn't. Uh, but then when they got to the end part, when they actually started wrestling finally, <laughs> and the death match started essentially, it was um, it was great. They they both had really good chemistry with each other. They did some really cool spots. I still can't believe she jumped off that ladder onto the chair or onto the table to the outside. That kind of blew my mind i was not expecting that i did not expect her to do that and um th this is my first uh introduction to chris chris brooks i think his name is and uh he impressed me he did really good he seems like he's a pretty decent wrestler um but i think he was kind of holding back on some of his moves because he was fighting a woman so i'm curious to see what he could do if he was in the ring uh, with someone who was more his size, uh, strength and strength wise, it'd be really cool because his knees looked kind of good, but they were very pulled back. I don't know if that's just how he always does them or if he just didn't want to knee her in the face. Uh, everything else seemed really good. Uh, she was fucking crazy, like really, really crazy, uh, in a very, very good way. Her, her voice and the, her mannerisms when she talks is kind of perfect. It, I really don't know how to explain it, but the best way I can explain her character is kind of like a cheerful yandere. Um, she she she's very crazy and she will try to kill you, but like she's very cheery and happy go lucky at the same time most of the time. It it's very odd. It's very odd, and I love it. Um, I don't know if she's a part of Tokyo Joshi. Cause I don't even know if that was a DDT thing because the the paper she brought out said noah and i know noah got added to the ddt universe or something not too long ago or a long time ago i don't know when and so that might have been like her produced show under noah which makes me think maybe she's a part of noah but i i thought noah was like a male company i'm not really sure though she 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 seems familiar with the the corner like leg thing when she would get up on the corner and like lift her leg i remember seeing that and i think it's because i remember seeing her the first time i got into tokyo joshi uh pro wrestling that was my reaction video to the uh the match between that chick and chris brooks i don't know if that was the valentine's day death match that everyone kept talking about or maybe it was like the new year's death match and they, they made it seem like it happened at new year's but valentine's day is like two months after new year's so I, I don't know. All right, and as always, at the end of my video, I will be shouting out all of my Patreon supporters with the $3 or more tiers. Uh, as of right now, everyone is a $3 or more tier, so everyone's getting a shout out. Starting with Smack It Down Podcast, um, one of my first, or I believe first, Patreon supporter. It's been one. I have a terrible memory. I just know it was one of my first. Um, I also uh, appeared on his podcast not too long ago when we talked about the Cinderella tournament. It was really fun. Then we have uh, Miss Sola uh, because Koreans don't say the R. I, I, I guess it would be pronounced like Miss Solal, not Sola, Solal. It's kind of like Japanese in a way. Um, and then uh, Justin Herenis. Who is the uh, the reason this video was even made? He he went for the five dollar tier and requested me to react to this. Uh, I hope I don't hurt your feelings too much with how much I hated the first part, but the end part was spot on, and I'm very glad you requested this because the last part was great. It was super super good. Um, then we have K Master of None, the number one Momo fan or whatever. Feel free to argue with him if you want about that. 
And then we have uh, the newest addition to the $3 tier. It used to be $1 tier, but is now $3 tier. The Tokyo Cyber Drifter. Uh, he's, he's been in my Discord for a while, just like all of these people, except maybe Justin. I don't, no one really knows who Justin is. Um, it's kind of a mystery in the Discord. Uh, but uh, thank you all for your patronage. And um, I hope this video was satisfactory to you, Justin. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.